So here we're on hole 13 and uh, I want to show, demonstrate how poorly our push-up greens drain even with the XGD installed. There's three basic types of drainage you talk about with plant health and playability. Air drainage, you know, to get good air movement so things evaporate and wick away. Surface drainage, which you can see here, the runoff areas, um, very important. Obviously in the winter months when the soil freezes, all, the only drainage you really have is surface drainage. And, um, and then internal drainage, which is hugely important. You can see here the water is building and just running down like a stream saturating the soil here. But um, you can see the cup half filled with water. But the tie-ins on these green expansions are very challenging to do in such a way where they're seamless. You can see right here where the to the left of me is the the expanded area to the right is the old existing green. Um, 15 we did and that worked out really well but mainly because the design of that green is one continuous sweep up. This green is a better example of how the rest of them are going to be. In fact holes number 10 and um, 6, 11, they have terrible swales in, the, in, the, in those areas where we want to expand out into, making tie-ins extremely difficult, uh, preventing water from pooling, like you can see here on the putting surface. Um, so long story short, if the club really wants to take advantage of the lost pin placements, enlarge the greens to their original size and shape, then rebuilding the greens is really the only way to do it seamlessly to USGA specs. So the soils match from one side to the other, from front to back. The turf would be reestablished in all creeping bent, which of course is a positive. And at the end, you'll have a consistent plain surface with consistent needs, which means all the greens would be maintained very similar instead of micromanaging each one and even areas within each one because there won't be any mix match of the soil, the drainage, and the turf.